feel this video is supposed to be like kind of like fun and like simple and I think actually it's like hey reveal truths about yourself so here we go hi guys I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things and today it's a 7 on Sunday day I haven't done 7 on Sunday in a while honestly it's because I've really needed to like take breaks on the weekends I've been getting a lot of migraines but that's really normal for the time of year when it gets like really hot outside and my body is like girl what's going on I'm like I don't know and it's like well here's a migraine and I'm like thank you not but anyway I have here the prompt let me read it out loud for you because I am horrible at short-term memory so let's see June 21st characters you identify with these could be characters you identify with could factor in race sexuality mental health or even day-to-day -day struggles talk about the characters you most see yourself in now this is really interesting because again it seems like such a fun prompt and then it's like I have to delve deep within myself to tell you what I identify with so Let's get a kraken, shall we? And we're gonna start with a book that I don't talk about a lot and it's still like, it was the first book I read this year, it's still like top 10 books I've read this year. I really need to get on that making a list of those books because I keep adding to it and at this point I think we're at 20 <laughs> or something. But anyway, I'm gonna go with Miss Evelyn Hugo from The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. First of all, she is a bisexual Latina woman. I'm not I can't remember if she is of I know she's of Cuban descent I am of Venezuelan descent Venezuela and Cuba are really close um, Not only geographically, but we are close as a people and also I find that her ambition her ability to maneuver being really ambitious and kind of morally gray with being a a good person is something that I identify with. I am a very ambitious person. I'm a the kind of person that like you wouldn't want to have in one of your classes because I would like be very angry if I wasn't number one in class. And I'm like again throwing that out there for the world. You're welcome. But yeah, I feel like Evelyn and I have that in common where it's like don't step in my way because I I will fuck you up. But I kind of have a heart of gold. So there you go. That's what I identify with with Evelyn and oh by the way I'm warning you I have way more than seven but the next one is I identify with Joe March from Little Women and I know you see me making a face at that because really I've always wanted to be an Amy but the reality is I'm a Joe and I am so a Joe that when my husband saw the movie he was like oh my god you are Joe March and I was like I know I know it's nothing against Joe it's just that I see so much of myself in her stubbornness in her continuously trying to better herself and yet doing the same thing over and over again her temper we have the same temper girl and it's like really bad and again I like that Jo is very ambitious to the point that she's willing to give up a lot of the things she believes in in order to become a writer. I don't know if you guys know, but in the book she actually starts writing like kind of shitty books in order to be paid, in order to send money to her family, which I actually think is a good thing. But uh, a lot of people might not agree with that decision and then they think that she should be writing what she really wants to write and not what she should be doing. And I am that kind of person that I will do what needs to be done, even if that thing that needs to be done doesn't necessarily agree with my core values. I'm not saying murder, rape, or anything like that, you know, but but honestly, um, I think you guys know that I used to write smut for a porn mag. And honestly, that is not something that I wanted to do. That is not something that I felt kind of came together with my feminist values. But I really needed the money at the time. I was, I was jobless. I needed it. So I really identify with Joe. March and smut writing apparently. We're gonna get into some heavier shit here, but we're gonna go with I identify a lot with the main character the unnamed main character in Rebecca and the reason for this is because I suffer from anxiety and actually this book I think depicts the anxious part of me really really well like how the author constantly feels like she, everybody hates her and like um, she's constantly comparing herself to somebody that she could never be like. I feel that 
to my core like um and, and how she often is worried that her husband is angry at her or that she did something wrong i am constantly worried about that every time i post a video on youtube i'm like i said something that is going to make everybody think that i am the most horrible person ever known to mankind and again yes i do take medication for my anxiety i am very open about that and yeah i i really when i was reading this book i was like i totally get what this woman is going through because i feel that i've gone through that myself so there you go i identified with the poor unnamed main character in rebecca and if you don't know this book starts with my favorite quote of all time which is last night i dreamt i went to vanderley again and i also identify with that because I feel like I've lost my home, like my Venezuelan home. I feel like it's lost to me forever and I dream about it a lot. So thinking about going back to that big house and like smelling like the bricks and in the summer and stuff like that. I think that that's why that quote resonates with me a lot. Told you it was going to get intense. So after that got real intense, I'm going to go with Spencer for Brander Sinister Skyward. Now, how do I identify with Spencer? I was a real intense teenager <laughs> and I felt like the world owed me something and I felt like I was so good at X, Y, Z and I had to once come to terms with the fact that I wasn't that good and that I, I needed to hone my skill set and I just love how obnoxious Spencer is because I feel that I was like exactly as obnoxious as a teenager I love how she's like obsessed with being a warrior because I was also obsessed with being a warrior and let me tell you I am 4'11 for those of you that don't speak American that is I am 1 meter 50 which means I am the tiniest most adorable thing when I'm angry <laughs> <laughs> like Spencer is kind of tiny and adorable and when she's angry she's like girl yeah <laughs> so I feel like that but I also like how um cunning she is how able how she's able to go, go after her dreams even though it's not in the way she originally thought she would and uh, also her clear disrespect for authority because <laughs> <laughs> yup, <laughs> that, that, that is something that mm, we have in common. <laughs> and in that same vein, let me get it. I'm gonna go with Ronan Lynch from uh, Maggie Steve Otter's uh, The Raven Cycle World. I have here called down the hawk because we all know how I feel about the actual Raven Cycle. First of all, um, Ronan is queer. I am queer and also he is the rebel of the group and he is the one that everybody is worried is going to do something completely ridiculous hurtful to themselves and something and i was that kid i was a kid let me let me tell you a story about my hand i have this right hand out of sheer luck and the expertise of a doctor that tried to fix me after i did a stupid thing i was mountain biking with my friends whatever we were um we were not sober don't go mountain biking when you're not sober and but i really wanted to be the best and i want and i also wanted i guess i wanted people to be scared of what i could do you know um again i'm, I'm revealing so much about myself in this video i kind of feel exposed but anyway um i fell down there was a stick on the ground the stick went through my hand through my freaking hand well it didn't completely go out the other side but like you could see it like sticking out it was really gruesome <laughs> So anyway, uh, what did I do? I took the stick out and I was like, yeah, let's go again. Um, uh, I don't know why I wasn't in pain. I think it was the adrenaline of it all. Uh, but anyway, I didn't go to the doctor. The next day I did go to the doctor. And um, basically the doctor made me sign an affidavit saying that if he had to amputate my hand, I couldn't sue the hospital because it was my fault that I didn't go seek medical um, intervention before. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, four surgeries later, I still have a hand, so <laughs> if that is not the most Ronan Lynch thing you've ever heard, I don't know what is. <laughs> I love that I'm laughing about it. Let's see, who else? Oh, okay, I have another one here that is kind of a surprise, and that is Prince, is it Henry? Yes, Prince Henry from uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. I 
know this book is a little bit polarizing. I know some people don't like it, but let me tell you why I identify with Henry. I feel most of the time that I have to put on a facade and I grew up in a, in a family where I always felt that I had to put on this mask in order to like fit into my my family. My family are all like, they're all so fancy and they're all so like I don't know, like glittery and not not in the twilight sense, but they're all so fancy and I'm not. <laughs> so I am actually kind of a mess and I feel that I identify with Henry because he feels he has to put on this facade. I also hid my sexuality from my family not and, and I don't think it was because they wouldn't accept me. But it was because I was scared of coming out to them and I was scared of coming out to myself um, Which Henry doesn't have that problem, but that whole hiding and also <laughs> this, is, this is so specific, but I know the Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie, okay? I know that, I know it, like I, I got a tattoo that says May the Force be with you I know the Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie but I like The Return of the Jedi so much, and so does Henry. <laughs> and, so, and when he explained why he liked The Return of the Jedi, and why it, like, it meant that somebody can overcome their upbringing, can overcome who they are, can overcome anything, and just hope and feel good, and like that, that, that thing that Luke does where he's tempted by the dark side, he could have everything, but he chooses not to, because he believes in hope and you know fuck man who doesn't like that <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna go with henry from red white and royal blue victor vale which i said i would date victor vale which really means i would date myself but you know what i think i would actually be more like elijah now that I'm thinking about it, is I want to be Victor Vale, but the reality is I would probably be more like Elijah. And I'm just, I had prepared the whole speech about why I feel that I'm Victor Vale, but actually I think I would be more like Elijah. Now, I'm not saying that I would start murdering people again. Why do I see myself in these characters? It's just that Elijah really feels like he has something to prove and he feels like he would go to the ends of the earth to prove it. And I feel that the way Elijah feels about himself when he comes back and I feel that if I was given superpowers I would probably not be the good guy I would probably try to justify myself doing a lot of things that are not cool and I know that that sounds really bad but I know myself enough to know that um, that if I was given superpowers I would probably not be part of the X-Men I would be part of Magneto's gang. I don't like to kill people. It's not <laughs> Disclaimer! I don't like to kill people. But I, 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 I do believe that I would be corrupted with the idea that the ends justify the means. Like, do we kill these 10 people in order to save this, these 1 million people? That kind of thing, you know? I don't believe in war, I don't believe in any of that. But I feel that if in this world I was anybody, I would identify with Elijah. Is it Elijah or Elias? I think it's Eli. I've been saying the right. Eli, okay, so Eli, there you go. <laughs> and in the same vein, I'm gonna go with The Magicians by Lev Grossman and I'm gonna go with this main character's name whose name I pronounce like shit and it's Quentin. And it's because Quentin, I think, would be great, would probably be one of the best, if not the best magicians of his time if he would allow himself to be and he, if he wasn't so insecure. There we go, that's the word I'm looking for. And I think that I could be a lot more than I am and I already think that, I'm, that I've achieved a lot in my life but I think that I, if I just allowed myself and I, to break free of the bonds that are inside of my head of me not being good enough, of not being pretty enough, of not being enough, then I could really probably do a lot more than I have done. So that's how I identify with Quentin. Again, this is such an intense tag. Like I didn't expect it to get so intense. Second to last. Do you dream of Terra 2? There's a character in here named Poppy. Poppy is a girl who speaks 32 languages. I do not speak 32 languages, but I can more or less understand five or six. <laughs> so, you know, a little bit different. 
But what I identify with with Poppy is that she is, again, insecure about herself, insecure about her abilities, insecure that she's any good. And when she gets chosen to go to Terra 2, she's so scared that she wants to back down, but she doesn't because she knows she's going to let everyone down if she backs down. And that's me. I am not brave. A lot of people think that I'm brave. It's just that I'm scared of letting people down. So if I say I'm jumping out that wall, which is something I have done before, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> you know, like, that's a bad idea. Because they said I was going to. So yeah, I identify with Poppy. I identify with her ease of learning languages. I like how she explains communication. I like how she explains how she learns languages and I also like that she suffers from depression and anxiety and I felt that and as somebody who always tried to be an overachiever in everything she did Poppy is the same way and she also feels like she doesn't deserve the spot that she was given like like she lied somehow and I feel that a lot too no matter what I do I always feel I cheated my way to it so that's how I identify with Poppy how many books is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah, The Rider and The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Sedgwick because he hates Frankenstein. And I hate Frankenstein too by Mary Shelley. So there you go. The Monsters We Deserve. I identify with this man a lot because everybody loves the monsters we not the monsters we deserve. Everybody loves Frankenstein and I'm like over here like I don't really like that boy. So yeah, that's it. Those are the characters. I was supposed to pick seven, but being the narcissistic bitch that I am, I picked 11. Those are the characters that I identify with the most. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Which characters do you identify with the most? I, I really love this prompt. I really want to know what you guys think. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed finding out a little bit more about me and the fact that, you know, if you give me superpowers, I might become a mass murderer. So... <laughs> There you go. Without further ado, I bid you adieu, and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, guys. Oh, fuck, I have to do the thumbnail. It's hot. We gotta change out of this shirt.